547 now on Daybreak. And over the years, Western New York has seen its fair share of development proposals. Now, some have obviously panned out, while others have not. But it turns out a variety of them made the news 10, 20, 30, and even 40 years ago this week. Dave McKinley remembers when they were all news to you. Ten years ago this week, a fire damaged the abandoned e and Holmes Machinery Company building, but that didn't stop it from being redeveloped into what you now know as Resurgence Brewing. Where the barrel house once stood for William Simon Brewing, ground was broken for Flying Bison Brewing near Larkinville. It was built in short order and continues in business a decade later. And upon vacant land where once stood Ted's Hot Dogs and the Peacebridge Exhibition Center, ground was broken for a new athletic complex for DeUville College, which 10 years later seems to be in good working order and functioning as intended when construction began on it a decade ago this week in 2014. 20 years ago this week when inspired by a successful Hollywood film adult dodgeball leagues were coming into fashion and when the final episode of Frasier was being shot Developers from across the country came to tour Buffalo's barren Outer Harbor, enticed by the NFTA, which at the time owned most of the property there, and which said it had a big plan for the place. The NFTA says this time, and this plan, and this century will be different. The project is likely to be a mix of housing, shops, and perhaps some entertainment. 20 years later, the state now controls the land, and none of those things mentioned have actually come to pass, notwithstanding some of the public improvements that have been and continue to be made here since this week in 2004. 30 years ago this week, development in Niagara Falls largely centered on the answer to a single question. Whether to sell a large parcel of city property to Native Americans who'd construct a casino. As most would know, they did. But at that time, the Falls was still trying to exercise some ghosts from its past, about which a major legal decision came down. We're just tickled to death. We're just very, very pleased. Lawyers for Occidental, formerly Hooker Chemical, reacting to a judge's ruling that while the company could be held liable for cleanup costs for the chemicals it had dumped at Love Canal decades before, it would not be subject to $250 million in punitive damages sought by the state. The ruling noted that the way Hooker dumped chemicals generations prior followed the acceptable standard of the times. And that they cannot be judged having taken those actions at that time against the standards and knowledge of today. Put another way, this legal ruling held one cannot be made to pay reparations for common and lawful customs and practices or sins of the past, even if those practices would be unacceptable or even abhorrent today. Forty years ago this week, when Mr. Cub himself, Ernie Banks, came to town to help announce that Buffalo had been selected as host site of the next Major League Baseball old-timers game, to be played at fabled War Memorial Stadium. The big development news surrounded the shuttered Statler Hilton Hotel, which had ceased operation six months prior as plans were announced for... A shopping center and office complex. The undertaking will be privately funded at a cost of eight to ten million dollars. The Statler is a landmark going to be reborn. Or so they thought. But they wouldn't be the last to come and go with plans that failed to materialize. And all these years later, with yet again another developer, the work continues to bring the old girl back, although they still have a ways to go to bring about the vision that's been talked about and dreamed of since the days when it was all news to you. I saw the photographer there wearing a vest and a plaid shirt. I'm like, Nate Benson, back oh, then, sure. 40 years that. ago. <laughs> I had Kilgore cameo. Yeah.